This video segment is an overview of the optical disc reviver built by Silicon Forensics. At some point, you have probably come across optical media that has caused you delays while trying to capture the data in an image format. This drive is designed to help the forensic examiner recover data from an optical disc that had been damaged or possibly deleted. Here are some typical scenarios that this drive can assist with in your recovery efforts. A CDRW disk that someone has deleted the data using a quick erase function of their CD burning software. A CD or DVD that has been damaged or scratched to the point where the drive thinks the disk is blank. A mini DVD-R from a digital camcorder that has been damaged where the drive may have trouble reading the disk. A pocket CDRW from a digital camera that someone has deleted photographs on. Typically, the problem you are facing is your existing CD or DVD drive. It is standing between you and the data on the disk. If you place a disk in your drive and the drive believes the disk is blank, you will not be able to start the imaging process. The drive thinks the disk is blank and that is the roadblock. The optical disk reviver will get you past that roadblock. This drive is very simple to use. It functions just like a standard DVD drive. So when you are not trying to recover data, just use it like your current off-the-shelf DVD drive. In my other training video, I show you the behind-the-scenes details that make this drive perform its job. Since this is an overview, let's jump right in. In this scenario, my suspect disc is a Staples brand 4-speed CDRW disc that I believe the suspect may have used the quick erase function to delete the data. First I take a disc that is similar to the suspect disc that I want to image. I happen to have a new Sony 4-speed CDRW disc. This is what I will call my dummy disc. I have created a large file that is about 700 megabytes in size using a freeware tool called Dummy File Creator. I then burn that file to my dummy disc. I open the tray of the optical disc reviver and insert the dummy disc. When I close the tray, Windows properly detects the disc and the large volume of data on the disc. I have also started my favorite imaging software called IsoBuster Pro. Here, IsoBuster sees the data as well. Now I press the bypass button on the front of the drive. As you see, the two lights on the front of the drive are flashing like a train crossing. The first thing this does is tell the drive to stop the disc from spinning, which is a very cool function. The last thing you want is a flying piece of plastic when you open the tray. Once the spinning stops, the tray ejects my dummy disc. However, the drive still thinks that my dummy disc is inserted, and that is important. I remove the dummy disc and insert the suspect disc. Pressing the bypass button or gently pushing the tray will close the tray. The red lights alternate flashing, which means the drive is in the bypass mode and is ready. Now we are ready to image. To make my image, I use the create IBP file. What this allows me to do is start the imaging process and stop it if necessary. I can later restart the process from where it left off. This imaging process will take a long time as IsoBuster is trying to read the beginning of the disk, which has basically been zeroed out. After so many failed attempts to read the blank block of data, it moves to the next block. The number of attempts can be set in the options of IsoBuster. Once it gets past the blank blocks, IsoBuster starts to image and recover the deleted data. During this process, I usually move to another pending task in the lab. Now that IsoBuster completed the imaging task, I am going to open the IBP file that I created. I select Open As Is. As you can see, IsoBuster has completed the task, and I end up with successfully recovering the suspect's deleted data.